Welcome to the Hookup on Music with your host, Tony Bird. Welcome, everybody, to episode 85. And uh, we're rounding out August with uh, talking about some great music here today and a continuation on my great soundtrack pick of the week, which we're going to uh, get to here in just a little while. But uh, let's get started. What have you been listening to out there? What's been new in your avenue of new tunes? Um, on, on our playlist recently, a lot, a lot, a lot of new and very interesting music has dropped. And um, we're always going to be here to share that with you. So thank you very much again for being here, whether if you're listening to it at night or during the day. I like just saying night, so if you're listening to it through the day, just erase the word night and put day in there instead, but uh, really glad that you're here today or tonight, um, but let's get rolling and see what we got. Um, brand new band, I don't know if you've ever heard of these guys, they're called Baby, and they are really very interesting, uh, they are a five-piece band, okay, Um Honestly, I heard this song recently called Kinky, and honestly, my uh, just digging into them more has been very, 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 very exciting. Um, but they're from London, so we love bands from London, so you definitely know that you're in for a treat and into some really good stuff. Uh, here's a little clip of that song, Kinky. Hey, you look at me. Yeah, can we go really 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 good and interesting and new and um you know um the band is consisted of benji jesse tommy dean and tom um their live show is uh really really awesome from all the videos that i have caught up and uh, been able to uh, see them um but uh all together this is something that uh, i was not expecting to hear because it's got a infectious sound and it's definitely bringing a lot of different genres together. And just this one song that I just played for you, it gives me some uh, early, 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 early first album Kings of Leon vibes, really with that guitar, but really a, an excellent um, presence on stage from everything that I'm seeing and uh, really, really, really worth your time um, to get into. Um, got a lot of other stuff too not just the song kinky so uh, dig a little bit deeper we're just getting started um digging deeper and uh we will get back to you when we uh so-called get the uh get the more uh bby in or baby i don't know you know however you want to say it but i think it's bby uh get that into uh, uh what do they call that uh when you're uh the uh we're mixing it all in with all the rest of the awesome stuff that we are listening to. So please check that out. Um, this band that fell across our, uh, another band that fell just right across our uh, turntable is this band called, uh, I mean, honestly, this is another really, really awesome name. Truck Fighters, okay, is the name of this band. Um, really, really uh, awesome and interesting. Um Gravity X is the album by Truck Fighters that we kind of got started on, an album that came out in um, June of 2005. But if you are a fan of bands like Clutch and Fu Manchu and that really awesome uh, Desert Fuzz, uh, we'll just call it here, this album is really, really great. Uh, the leadoff track is 7 minutes and 30 seconds, a couple other, minute, uh, couple other tracks over uh, 6 minutes. But uh, a band that uh, honestly putting out some really good stuff going um, back through um, some of what they are doing and they are doing some really, really good stuff. And they got a show coming up here at the uh, end of September. Uh, so if you uh, get a chance to uh, check that out, um, please do so. I think um, it's going to be um, going to be really, really good. And um we're going to try to get out there. It's going to be at Reggie's, okay? Um, it's going to be, just so that you are familiar with, um, September 17th is the date that they are playing. So um, 
get out there and uh, check that out. Truck Fighters, really, really good stuff. A really, really awesome guitar sound. Um, also, in the really awesome guitar sound is uh, an all-around sound. If you're into Gorillas or you're into that awesome 80s music, we've talked about these guys before, kind of like how we started with BBY tonight. Um, this new Fountains DC album just dropped. Really, 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 really good. Um, the name of the album is Romance, okay? Um, from the get-go, the song really, really takes off. Um, Starburster is the song that we covered uh, within the last 10 episodes to lead off as a new track. But this full album um, is really, really, really good. Um, I have my daughter walking around uh, saying uh, Starburster. So she's the song is stuck with her, and she's only three years old. But uh, really good stuff okay um where their last album in 2022 uh skinty fire um was a a, a kind of a, their first set of albums kind of give them a, more of a where they're coming from which is in dublin ireland um this new album is kind of doesn't have that uh, dublin ireland sound this is more of an expansive sound nothing was wrong with the sound before but uh as a band that grows they are growing and really hitting i think new peaks which is awesome because uh another band that is really something to uh withhold last time we were here and talking about them i played you a um a track from i played you that starburster track uh when they played it live and they got a great 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 live sound but in the studio they got to work with james ford who actually worked with gorillas uh arctic monkeys and even depeche mode which if you are a fan of any of those um i would definitely please check this out this is something that is really in um should be really up your alley um a really great, great songs and tracks on this album in the modern world. Um, really great, uh, dreamy uh, song. Um, his voice is really awesome, and by his, um, Shatan is uh, really, 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 really um, an excellent singer. Um, just excellent all around in the uh, presentation with the music. And when you're listening to any artist, you're uh, and it's Grian uh, Chaten, um, who is the front man of the band Fountains DC. I like to sometimes just say the last name, but in case you weren't familiar with the full name, definitely um, dig deeper into this new album. You are not going to be disappointed. And Romance is the name of that um, album. Um, recently, um, uh, Keith Moon um celebrated a birthday um unfortunately keith moon is no longer here but uh if he was he would have just celebrated a birthday just about two a week and a half ago and i like to imagine you know just uh where would keith be right now if he was here that's interesting to think about um he would be you know over 80 years old would he still be playing the drums um his talents are always on the forefront i've been digging deep into quadrophenia lately one of my favorite who albums and his drums are are, are, are are all over that but anytime he was present uh he always liked to bring a magic to the drum set <laughs> But tonight, we're going to uh, maybe dig into a little bit of uh, some performances you may not be for so, uh, so familiar with uh, by uh, our, our great Keith. Um, I like to really go into, we'll, we'll, we'll go into who's next and get started. Get rid of the, we've talked on here about who's next. But if you go into his drums on going mobile, um, which honestly, uh, there is no Roger Daltrey on this track, so it's just a three piece. But his drums um, are all all over the place, uh, getting in tune um, when his drums kick in. Again, um, him and Entwistle were quite the enigmatic, uh, enigmatic team that really, um, not only on stage but off stage, just really brought a thunderous uh, approach to everything that they were doing. Um, 
Keith just always really just showcased a uh, a style that was different, um, a style that a lot of artists and drummers, um, and by artists, I mean, you didn't have to be a drummer to say, okay, Keith Moon, you know, he has a style that is different and onto his own and whatever I am doing musically, I need to uh, have a style onto my own. And uh, Keith did a really, really, really great job at that. Um, again, my wife, another great example of awesome drumming by Keith, but, uh, like, let's say you go to the who by numbers. Um, the crazy thing about some of the, these, these albums as we got later was Keith wouldn't practice. He wouldn't practice in between, um, albums. He wouldn't keep up with his skill. So he'd have to go back into the studio and kind of relearn the drums right before they were about to record, especially, um, on the Who by Numbers and uh, his final album with the Who, uh, Who's Next. To the point that when um, Keith was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to uh, release a solo album, Two Sides of the Moon. Um, not, 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 not any drumming that you are familiar with in the Who was, was present in that. But on the Who by Numbers, uh, Slip Kid, uh, excellent, excellent drumming, Dreaming from the Waste, Excellent, excellent, excellent drumming. Success story, excellent drumming. His drumming mic um, is really, really awesome. If you ever get an opportunity, um, check out uh, just the way his drums in the studio looked and uh, to imagine um, the man playing them. I mean, if you are currently watching the live version or if you're just listening, I mean, as the years went on, he added more drum pieces. He had, uh, you know, uh, even um, what's the word I'm looking for? He had a lot of uh, drum um, competition in other bands. You know, other artists would be like, you know, I'm going to compete with you, Keith, because you have what I would say to be just a great, great, great uh, drum set. You know, drummer from the Alice Cooper band, Neil Smith, would uh, him and and Keith would have a drum off as to uh, not who could drum better, but who actually had more pieces to their drum kit. So um, very, very awesome to always um, see the enigmatic uh, um, Keith Moon in what he was doing. Um, on their last album, um, Who Are You? Uh, deeper uh, tracks like Sister Disco, um, New Song, Had Enough. Um, just a really, again, um, awesome drum. Even though at this point... Sadly, right before his passing, his skills were not at the top of his game because, as I stated, he was not practicing. So there are a couple tracks on this album where he could not uh, drum to the uh, standard of what the song called for. So they had to put in like shakers or, or, or sounds really kind of sad in a way, but uh, go deeper, you know, go deeper into uh, what Keith was doing. A quick one. A great, great album from the early Keith. The track, A Quick One While He's Away. Excellent drumming. Boris the Spider. Um, very interesting. Heat Wave. A great, great uh, cover. Run, Run, Run. The kickoff um, to A Quick One is always awesome. Um, his drums are great. He's great. We love him here at uh, The Hookup on Music. Always think of the what ifs. Think of him hanging out with lots of cool people like Joe Walsh. Um, really cool. Uh, check out if you get a chance. He had a really awesome um, house that he uh, lived in. Check that out and what that looked like. Um, very interesting life. Great biography if you get a chance to read it too. Um, all right, let's continue. Um, recently, as I stated at the beginning of the show, on this past Sunday's um, at the show, my soundtrack pick of the week was a great soundtrack called Repo Man. Um, dug deep onto that, uh, talked about some great tracks, great punk rock tracks. Um, but uh, none more further than who is at the top of this uh, this 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 uh, list was uh, Iggy Pop. He was uh, wrote a song for the album called Repo Man. So I thought, you know what? Let's go a little bit deeper on Iggy Pop. To get started, where did I first hear Iggy Pop? Um, 
the background behind if you're listening um was an album from 86 called blah 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 um my uh father picked that up and uh brought that home and honestly this first track it's well always stuck in my head especially this beginning i'm a real wild one wild one wild one wild one really great song really great album a very interesting album in the uh, career because uh well number one after a four-year hiatus without working with him david bowie was back as his prime collaborator which was very interesting because after many many years of listening to this i was very familiar with their work together I was not familiar that uh bowie was at the forefront of this album but again great uh songs on this this album um cry for love is a really awesome track baby i can't fall is a really awesome track winners and losers um the one thing about uh iggy pop is he's been part of so many great things like the stooges which we'll have to cover at a later date because they're just awesome on their own um but he's got that punk sensibility but at the same sense he's got a really great just an all-around musical sensibility which is always really cool. And um, Iggy Pop um, came from um, Muskegon, Michigan um, in uh, April 21st, 1947, still playing and still playing very, very well. Uh, within the last couple of years, he came to town um, in Chicago at the Salt Shed. Sounded great. Um, but he was uh, really, really, really... Uh, wanted to be part of the music uh, world because he began playing drums in the fifth grade um what he did was he uh started with rubber pads glued to the plywood before his parents actually bought him a drum set you cannot say that uh that isn't awesome he also stated that once he hit junior high in ann arbor he began going to school with the son of the president of ford motor company um but what was crazy was that uh he could beat them all you know, the appearance, uh, the investment that his parents made in his drum kit um, made him, he felt, to be stronger than anybody who had a lot of money. Um, his parents were so cool that they let him keep his drum set in their master bedroom. I mean, that if that's not awesome and that's just not uh, all around cool, um, you got to say Iggy Pop. Um, is, is awesome and if it wasn't for his cool parents you know i don't know what we would have had um with that but when you get off to a kickoff to his debut studio album the idiot a great title for a studio album what he wanted was he s described the album as a cross between james brown and craft work you can move you could groove it's got a little bit of everything and honestly it does um, Night Clubbing is a great song. The original China Girl, before David Bowie actually got a hold of it on his solo album because he produced this album. So, of course, he was there. So, of course, he's a part of it. He helped write um, some of these songs in the studio. Um, you know, all the songs were written by Pop and Bowie as they indulged in lots of indulgences, except um, Sister Midnight, which Carlos... Alomar, who was a part of Bowie's band, um, joined in and uh, played guitar on this album and helped out. But Bowie played keyboard, synthesizer, guitar, piano, xylophone, and backing vocals. This continues this awesome trend with Bowie and uh, and Iggy for the next album on uh, Lust for Life, another really, 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 really great um, album. Um, except all the lyrics... Um, were written with uh by just pop on this uh album but uh the song that really kind of another one that kind of gets started in my career of listening to amazing um iggy pop is just the song lust for life i mean what a great track that is that was part of train spotting um can never 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 get a too much of that and honestly his music is just very very important because as the albums keep going on um really really good kill city was really really good um the tbi live album um was good 1979's new values um bringing back a little bit of the punk on this one um starting off with uh the song um 
new values. Also brought back uh, James Williamson um, was a part of this album. You may not be familiar with him, but he was the guitarist on Raw Power. Um, the uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, the the very very awesome and very very important um, Stooges album. But again, you can go on forever about Iggy Pop. He's just awesome all around and just a really great great sensibility if you're looking on screen it is him bowie and pop playing together um great friends that they were uh check out more uh deeper really 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 great um another one of my personal favorites um just a spin on, on coolness is one peter gabriel another one who was part of a very very important band in genesis but when he goes out on his own um also becomes very very important of course the very first song he comes out with on his own a very huge song um important by many many standards just because it sounds awesome um but because it's a man who's breaking up with his awesome band genesis he's leaving them and it's salisbury hill you know what's what's ahead what's coming up peter gabriel does a really great insight of um into that if you are a fan of the band tool there is some really awesome comparisons on early Genesis, or if you uh, fast forward to uh, the opening two tracks on Peter Gabriel's Security album, a great album, um, The Rhythm and the Heat, and San Jacinto, a great, 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 great uh, album. Um, just a, a, a great uh, background. Um the drums that uh drummer jerry uh Murata, um an amazing drummer um an amazing sounding drummer who has worked with so many great artists started with orleans if you're familiar with that great album cover with them with no shirts on um peter gabriel's band from uh he was part of peter gabriel's band from 77 to 86 also working with hall and oates um a great sound he's been just a part of so many albums by from tears for fears and paul mccartney um to carly Simon and annie defranco just again i can't talk much more about jerry Murata and how great he is but his importance on just um peter gabriel's albums as a whole are just uh really cool um, also really cool is, as stated, some of the sounds used on these albums with the Lynn programming, the Fairlight CMI, the Prophet 5, the Serto, the Moog synthesizer, all mixed into the studio with really great, uh, really great uh, work, especially on the Rhythm and the Heat. Um, one of my favorite songs is, is I Have the Touch. Um, again, the drums on this track are just something that are different. Um really great um in 1996 gabriel remixed i have the touch with uh robbie robertson for the movie phenomenon i did not know that that's very interesting uh while doing research for this that uh, peter gabriel was uh working and mixing that all in also mixing it all in in just great 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 uh function is the uh one and only um sledgehammer i uh, love that and we also love um the album that came after four which we we're talking about i mean you go through every one of peter gabriel's albums and you're not going to find a stinker in the bunch even the brand new one um that was just released um recently i slash o um we talked about on the show but you go to um by the time you get to so in 1986 i mean peter is just huge sledgehammer in your eyes from the great to say anything um don't give up big time red rain i mean these songs are all played but the video of sledgehammer of course if um you have not taken the time to uh sit down and really watch that video in a long time you are not going to be disappointed because honestly it is surely 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 amazing and to be frankly honest with you, who doesn't like amazing things? And uh, Peter Gabriel brings the amazing to the uh, forefront on So. Um, an album that I like to talk about a little bit, which came six years later, is Us. This is kind of where I did see Sledgehammer, but Us was where I first saw and heard new Peter Gabriel 
which made me realize with digging in the dirt um really really great song i love that song um kiss that frog was pretty pretty good too uh steam was uh the first track that uh i really 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 thought was awesome too digging in the dirt and steam both of those songs off of that album are great if it has been a while please dig into that um just this past sunday i happened to get to see uh simon and garfunkel tribute act um they were they were pretty they were they were okay but what really makes me uh realize was was i needed to dig back into bridge over troubled water um when's the last time you dug through this album um really really good stuff on this album um by good stuff i mean some of the greatest music that you may um what's the word i'm looking for ever hear um also just a great around um studio album that has been noted on lists of for 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 many 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 years um only coming out with five studio albums and this being the final one um released in 1970 january 26th which is just the beginning of 1970 so a the problem I kind of had with the band that I saw was that they said that this was a 1970s band. And the reality was, is they came out with this album 26 days into 1970 and broke up. So I don't really consider them that, but back to the great album. Um, just some really awesome songs. <clears throat> El Condor, Pasa, if I could great, great track. Um, really used greatly in the movie wild with Reese Witherspoon. First time I actually heard that. And dug it back into the album. Cecilia really gets you a little bit of a forefront at where Paul Simon's going to be going in his career. Um, the Boxer, one of the greatest songs of all time, one of my favorites. Baby Driver, um, named after the great movie that uh, came out recently with Edgar Wright. Um, just a really fun, fun song. Um, Only Living Boy in New York is probably one of my uh, favorite songs. Been covered by a lot, a lot, a lot of different artists. Uh, The Tenors, Buffalo Tom, David Mead, Matt Nathanson, um, used amazingly. And the first time I actually, again, needed to dig deeper into it, uh, it was Garden State, um, named a film after it. But just an all-around great album. Please go back and check out Bridge Over Troubled Water if it's been a while. If you're looking for something heavy, COC's got you covered with America's Volume Dealer. Oh, man, if you are not listening to Corrosion of Conformity on the regular, um, you are not. You are missing out in so many, so many ways. Um, you know, we're going to just just go with america's volume dealer tonight their sixth studio album um a really really great album and the last album to feature longtime um drummer reed mullen who sadly passed away back in 2020 but a band that is tight when they are tight and a track you just heard 13 angels six minutes and 35 seconds of pure rock mike dean on bass woody weatherman on lead guitar Reed with Mullen, like I stated, on drums and the amazing lead vocals, rhythm guitar, and sometimes cowbell of Pepper Keenan um, brings this album loaded with Diablo Boulevard, Double Wide, Zippo, Over Me, Getting It On, just a really great um, production. And a production that I think that uh, when you look back and listen to it, harkens back to just a really, really classic, awesome, heavy rock time that. Uh, well, sometimes we're missing in today's world. Not to say that there isn't anything good and heavy out, but COC is great. Um, Down is great, but American's volume, um, volume Dealer is awesome. I had a good friend who really, really liked this album. Um, there is a really polished production to it. Um, the murkiness, though, of some of their past albums is a, is a little gone. Um, some, so some people think, though, but the songs hold up. The songwriting is great. 45 minutes and 48 seconds. You're not going to be disappointed. Um, it is 24 years old uh, coming up tomorrow. Um, and uh, tomorrow could be any time, but I'll give you the exact date. September 26th is when this album was released. So we thought let's dig a little bit deeper into America's volume dealer. 
Uh, if you're seeing any awesome concerts coming up recently, please, 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 please uh, share them with us. I know that there are a lot of good stuff coming up. Just this past Friday, Yes and Deep Purple played, hearing some good things. Um, but I have some friends who also are friends of uh, fans of Yes. Sadly, there's only one original member from the classic year, not even an original member, but from the classic years of Yes playing. Is it still considered? Deep Purple are working hard with a brand new album. They do have, um, again, um, the lead singer is still putting out really great uh, stuff. We've talked about them earlier with the new album. But, uh, you know, newer artists, like I stated earlier, BBY coming in town, check that out. Um, go listen to some great albums. Listen to some awesome albums. Share them with us. There's always great albums to listen to, to talk about, whether they be from Green Day, who just played in Milwaukee last night. Again, great, great show. I heard he said that they were louder than Chicago. Interesting. Um, Blur uh, played, uh, you know, not uh, recently, but uh, earlier in the summer at Rothbury. They may be wrapping up. Check out their albums. But overall, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, go back and listen to that at the show. Uh, look forward to our upcoming at the show that will be uh, released uh, this this upcoming weekend. Stay tuned for that date. Um, also, everybody out there, keep on spinning that music. We love to hear what you're listening to. We love to hear what you're uh, spinning. Go back, Iggy Pop. We got some corrosion. We dropped a lot of awesome stuff. That new Fountains DC. But to overall, everybody, I want everyone to have a good week. And we are going to kick off September next week with uh, something awesome and something special. So please, please, please tune in. Have a great week, everybody. My name is Tony. This is The Hookup on Music. Always a great time. Take care. Thank you for listening. Please look out for the audio version wherever you jam.